from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, May the 26th, 2021. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met today with Israel's President Reuven Rivlin at the President's residence in Jerusalem. Blinken later thanked Rivlin for, he wrote, your long-standing efforts to promote coexistence, tolerance, and peace among all the citizens of Israel. President Biden, Blinken wrote, looks forward to welcoming you to Washington. Blinken had extended an invite to Rivlin during the sit-down today, which Rivlin accepted. Rivlin thanked Blinken in the meeting for the U.S. administration's stance against the rise of anti-Semitism of late. Blinken left Israel today for Egypt, thanking, he wrote, my Israeli and Palestinian hosts for our constructive discussions. Our intensive diplomacy continues, he wrote, to build a future where Palestinians and Israelis enjoy equal measures of security, freedom, prosperity, and democracy. After meetings in Egypt today, Blinken left for Jordan this evening to meet with its king and other officials. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met today in Jerusalem with the British Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab, where he expressed his gratitude to the UK for its support. Thank you, and uh, Prime Minister Johnson, Boris, for the staunch, unwavering support of our right to self-defense during the recent operation. It's much appreciated. You can always count on us. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Rob tweeted that the two discussed the flourishing UK-Israel relationship, the importance of a durable ceasefire in Gaza, and the need to fight anti-Semitism, adding that the UK is committed to working with regional leaders to end the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and forge lasting peace. And Netanyahu today responded to remarks made by France's foreign minister this week suggesting that Israel was at risk for apartheid. Yves Le Drian told several news outlets, referring to the violence that broke out in Israel between Arabs and Jews during the conflict with Hamas, it clearly shows that if in the future we had a solution other than the two-state solution, we would have the ingredients of long-lasting apartheid saying that the risk for Israel of that was high. Netanyahu called the foreign minister's remarks a brazen, false claim that is without any foundation. Netanyahu stressed that in the state of Israel, all citizens are equal before the law, regardless of their origin. He said the state of Israel is the beacon of democracy and human rights in our region, the only democracy in our region. It has always been and it will always be. We will not tolerate any hypocritical and mendacious preaching of morality on this matter. The head of Palestinian terrorist group Hamas once again threatened Israel this week. Yahya Sinwar on Monday called the 11 days of attacks on Israel but a drill for what will come if Israel violates the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Hamas used Israel police's entering the mosque at the Temple Mount earlier this month, a site holy to both Muslims and Jews, as justification to attack the Jewish state. Israel police were forced to go into the site, a rare occurrence, as thousands of Palestinians had amassed weapons inside and were attacking Israeli forces from the mosque. Several anti-Semitic incidents to report to you about in Europe this past weekend. In Berlin, a Jewish man wearing a kippah was punched in the face by three attackers on Saturday. The attackers also spewing anti-Semitic slurs at him during the assault. A swastika and anti-Israel slogans were spray-painted on the gate of a Jewish cemetery in Spain. And a swastika was also found on a synagogue in Ukraine. And with the spike in anti-Semitic attacks here in the United States, some artists are taking a stand. Over 125 entertainers signed onto a letter last week urging their fellow artists to refrain from harmful and divisive rhetoric around the recent conflict between Israel and terror group Hamas. A letter spearheaded by Creative Communities for Peace. And actor Mark Ruffalo, who is known for being very critical of Israel, apologized this week on Twitter for using the term genocide to describe Israel's actions in Gaza. 
He tweeted on Monday, I have reflected and wanted to apologize for posts during the recent Israel-Hamas fighting that suggested Israel is committing genocide. It's not accurate, he wrote. It's inflammatory, disrespectful, and is being used to justify anti-Semitism here and abroad. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Wednesday, May the 26th at 7 o'clock, a symposium on the ways in which Judaism and Islam are similar with Omer Salem, Leora Einleger, Joe Potasnik, and host Sheikh Musa Drame. That's from Mercy College in Manhattan. At 8.30, students from the Alexander Muss High School in Israel talk about their experiences working with JNF's environmental initiatives. That's from Bethel Synagogue in New Rochelle. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Israeli Arab Yahya Mahmid, who shares his story advocating for Israel around the world as an educator for Stand With Us. At 10.30, the Arab-Israeli co-writer and director of Tel Aviv on Fire, Sameh Zouabe, speaks about his film with Eric Goldman. And coming up next, it's Thinking Out Loud. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, May the 26th, 2021. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy. Stay well.